On May 23, 1964, Jim Templeton took his wife, Annie, nine-year-old daughter, Frances, and five-year-old daughter, Elizabeth, to Burr Marsh for a pleasant afternoon of walking, sightseeing, and picture-taking. The Burr Marsh is a beautiful area of grassy plains and coastal dunes, and is notable for being just within sight of the shores of Scotland in Cumberland, England. Templeton and his family hiked up a grassy knoll eight miles west of their home in Carlisle on a sunny Saturday afternoon. Jim was a local fireman from Carlisle, Cumberland, England. He was also a respected historian and amateur photographer whose photos had routinely appeared in the local press. Due to this, Jim was relatively well known and had a genuinely good relationship with reporters and the press in the area. On this particular day, Jim wanted to take some photos of Elizabeth in her new dress with his Kodak 35mm camera. When he would get the images developed, they were forced to come face to face with something unbelievable that would change their lives, as well as leave ripples in the UFO community and mystify the public for decades to come. The Burr Marsh overlooks the Solway Firth in Cumberland, England. In 1974, Cumberland and Westmoreland were brought together to form the administrative county of Cumbria. This is why from time to time, you may see these two terms used interchangeably, depending on the point in time. The city of Carlisle, where Tippleton and his family were from, is located at the extreme northwest of England, on the border of Scotland. The Burr Marsh is an incredible landscape. Bird watchers and hikers alike come to this area for its natural beauty and historical significance. There is a distant view of the northern fells to the south, and King Edward I died of dysentery on July 7, 1307, while camped at the marsh during the War with Scotland. The marsh is prone to flooding at high tides, and there are times where certain roads are impassable. A firth is a word used in English to indicate coastal waters in the United Kingdom, mostly within Scotland. Linguistically cognate to fjord, which is a long, narrow inlet of the sea between high cliffs, bodies of water referred to as firths tend to be more common on the Scottish east coast or in the southwest of the country. The Solway Firth forms part of the border between England and Scotland. The Firth's coastline consists of lowland hills and small mountains. The area is mostly rural, with fishing and hill farming playing a predominant role in the economy, although tourism is increasing today. The Solway Firth is also home to several nature reserves, with many efforts of conservation targeting the area to preserve its wildlife and beauty. Templeton claimed that it was a normal afternoon that day. However, he did mention that the cow and sheep that would normally have infested the field were all bunched together feeding on the far side of the marsh, and a couple of older ladies knitting in a car parked at the side of the road roughly 300 to 400 yards away. But it didn't seem unusual. Again, it was a normal day. Templeton, overall noticing nothing awry, had Elizabeth pose on a grassy hillside in her new dress, grasping a bunch of freshly picked flowers. The weather was warm and sunny, and everything seemed normal. He proceeded to take three successive photos of Elizabeth with his Kodak SLR 35mm camera, and then the family continued on their way, unaware of what the camera had captured. The first two photos taken were of Elizabeth alone, and the third was more of a candid shot of daughter Elizabeth and Annie. A Kodak SLR is a single lens reflex camera, which utilizes an internal mirror mechanism that allows you to look straight through the lens and see a near exact approximation of what the image will look like. It's worth noting here that for the type of 35 millimeter camera Jim was using, Jim would have to manually turn a, a knob to advance the film to the next slot to clear the viewfinder, sort of a wind knob. In essence, he would have to pull the camera away from his face after snapping the photo to survey the scene and ensure the pose and picture was what he would have wanted, 
Obviously, this was long before the days of instant gratification with tablets and smartphones. A few days later, Templeton retrieved his photographs back from the chemist that had developed them. In passing, the chemist expressed his disappointment that a man had walked past and ruined what he believed to be the best shot of his daughter. Templeton, puzzled, looked at the photograph in question. While there have been scores of photos purporting to have captured the likeness of an extraterrestrial being, few are as intriguing as the image accidentally captured by Templeton that day. What he saw was the image of what appeared to be a tall humanoid figure clad in a spacesuit jutting out at an odd angle from behind his daughter's head. The figure was either extremely tall and capable of leaning off balance quite comfortably or was floating in the air. While many believe that the faceplate of this being is visible above the young girl's head, it has been put forth that the elbow of the entity is pointing backwards and that shoulder blades are visible. It also seems that the figure is looking to the right and what appears to be the faceplate is actually the shadow of the base of the skull. Templeton was astounded as neither he nor his wife had seen anything or anyone unusual on their walk, but what was most perplexing was the fact that the spaceman only showed up in the middle of the three consecutive photos he had shot and was missing from the first and last. Templeton, hoping to get to the bottom of this mystery, reported the case to the police and sent the picture back to Kodak, where it was exhaustively examined by trained professionals for any signs of faulty film stock, tampering, or hoax. The executives at Kodak were so intrigued by this dilemma that they offered a reward of free film for a year to any person that could solve the mystery as to how this spaceman got into the picture. Kodak announced that the photo was genuine, refuting the police's assumption that this was just a case of double exposure, where one negative having been printed on top of another during processing occurs. Chief Superintendent Oldcorn dismissed the image as merely one of those things, a freak picture. It wasn't long before this captivating image caught the attention of the worldwide press, and the picture was quickly published in newspapers around the globe. Templeton briefly described the event in December 7, 2002, to the Daily Mail in London, England. The following is Templeton's statement, which describes the incident at that time. As an amateur photographer on a day trip with my family, I took the photograph on Burr Marsh on May 23, 1964, using an SLR camera loaded with the new Coda Color film, which was processed by Kodak. I took three pictures of my daughter Elizabeth in a similar pose, and was shocked when the middle picture came back from Kodak, displaying what looks like a spaceman in the background. I took the picture to the police in Carlisle, who, after many doubts, examined it and stated there was nothing suspicious about it. The local newspaper, the Cumberland News, picked up the story, and within hours, it was all over the world. The picture is certainly not a fake, and I am as bemused as anyone else as to how this image appeared in the background. Over the four decades the photo has been in the public domain, I have had many thousands of letters from all over the world with various ideas or possibilities, most of which make little sense to me. It should also be noted that I have received no payment for taking this picture. The only suggestion that struck a chord with me was a letter from Woomera in Australia, which came a month after the picture was shown around the world. The people there were keen to see a good color copy of the photo as they had stopped a countdown of the Blue Streak rocket within hours of my photo being taken. Apparently, two similar looking spacemen had been seen close to the rocket. Only later did I find out that part of the Blue Streak rocket was made and tested within sight of Burr Marsh. James Templeton, Carlisle, Cumbria, England. Strangely, the region where the shot was taken had been a breeding ground of UFO activity. Many of the locals around the Burr Marsh believed that this was due to the nuclear power plant that resided nearby. Templeton told reporters 
that he had heard reports of the UFOs that had been seen over Burr Marsh, but had seen nothing of the sort when he took the now famous picture. Jim also wasn't the type to be interested in the topic of UFOs. According to eyewitness reports, on the very same day that Templeton took the infamous picture on May 23, 1964, a test launch countdown was aborted at a rocket test facility in Woomera, Australia. The launch in question was that of the Blue Streak rocket, first designed as a ballistic missile, then adapted to launch satellites. Blue Streak was Britain's contribution to the space race. The rocket program achieved a clean record early in its development and in 1964 was thrust into the world spotlight for its connection to the mysterious Solway Firth photograph. The test launch on May 23, 1964 was halted when two automatic survey cameras caught a pair of large, unidentified humanoid figures clad in what appeared to be white spacesuits walking around the launch pad. It should be noted that at the time of the launch, the Templeton photo had not reached Australia and the crew had no knowledge of the image. Remember, this was on the same day Templeton was snapping his three successive photos of his daughter, Elizabeth, in England. Templeton describes the incident as he heard it. They saw the monitors. Somebody was in the firing area, and, of course, the countdown was stopped. They searched the area. Nobody to be found, not a soul. And it was put down to a technical fault but it was exactly the same type of man. Same dress, same figure, same size as the picture that was taken over in Burr Marsh. Jim Templeton. Reporters soon discovered that the rocket to be used at the launch was manufactured in Spade Adam, England, which is just a few miles from the Burr Marsh. Soon after, the editor of a Cumberland newspaper requested to borrow the negative of the Spaceman photo in order to send a copy to another newspaper in Australia. Apparently, the Spaceman photo had appeared in the press there, and staff working at the Woomera t missile test site had seen it and had determined the similarity between the Spaceman and the Solway Firth photograph and the figures seen through the survey cameras during the halted test launch. When Australian reporters asked to view the security camera footage taken at Woomera on May 23rd, they were informed that of all the canisters of film taken during the entire Blue Streak project, the only canister missing was the one containing the requested footage. Prior to the test firing of an earlier Blue Streak rocket, observers stationed roughly 100 miles downrange called to Captain Tom Dalton Morgan to tell him there was a light heading his way at incredible speed towards restricted airspace. Tom and several other witnesses watched as the light circled the facility, then shot away and vanished. He later remarked that he could not conceive of any plane or missile that was able to perform the maneuvers seen by his team. The Wamara facility had been the site of numerous UFO sightings and at least one more aborted launch due to what was described as a white being that was spotted on the security cameras. Eventually, the Blue Streak rocket was successfully launched on June 5, 1964, but not before a long series of mysterious technical incidents and delays. Any connection the Solway Firth Spaceman has to do with the Project Blue Streak humanoids in spacesuits remains a mystery to this day. The Blue Streak program was eventually canceled in 1971. Just when it seemed as if Templeton's life could not get any more bizarre, he would receive a strange visit from some unlikely visitors a few weeks after the picture hit the press. Exact details of the next events tend to vary. Roughly a few weeks after the failed test launch, two men wearing dark suits and bowler hats pulled up to the firehouse where he worked in a dark Jaguar car. Some accounts state that the men actually came to his home. It should be noted that at this time, there was no popular concept of men in black as we now know today. The strange men, who referred to each other by numbers instead of names, claimed to be agents of Her Majesty's government, 
but do not show any form of identification. The mysterious men asked Templeton to take them to the site where the photo was taken. During the five-mile drive to the location, Templeton was bombarded by a series of bizarre questions pertaining to the weather and the behavior of the birds and other animals on the day in question. After they arrived at the scene, the men in black attempted to force Templeton to confess that he had photographed nothing more than an ordinary man. When Templeton refused to make such an admission, the men became angry and stormed off, leaving the befuddled firefighter to walk the five miles back to work. Other accounts of this incident state that the men asked Jim to show them where the photograph was taken, and Jim led them to the spot. One of the men then asked, this is where you saw the man then, to which Jim replied, no, excuse me, I didn't see anybody. The men abruptly thank Jim and leave in their car, stranding him on the marsh. In another account, a question that stands out in particular was, where did you see the second spaceman? Templeton had never reported a second spaceman. When he attempted to explain this to the men in black, they became visually aggressive. A second roll of film that Templeton had sent to Kodak for processing months later was returned with some of the negatives mysteriously missing. Templeton was forced to conclude that they were confiscated by government agents because the film may have revealed something secret. Not long after the failed Blue Streak test launch on September 14, 1964, another strange incident was captured by a United States Air Force team filming an Atlas rocket test launch in Big Sur, California. A U.S. Air Force lieutenant alleged that a craft fired four beams at a dummy warhead traveling 8,000 miles per hour, disabling the warhead and toppling it from flight. The next day, he was met with his superior, a major, and three mysterious men in gray suits. After some brief questioning and a review of the test flight footage, he was ordered not to discuss the incident. Now, almost 50 years later, the Solway Firth Spaceman photograph still defies explanation, remaining as one of the most intriguing unexplained images of the 20th century. In 1996, Templeton and his daughter, now Elizabeth Dobson, did an interview with the Scottish newspaper Dumfries Courier. Elizabeth would go on to say, I was really young and can't remember much. I think it was somebody from another planet. It is pretty selfish of us to think that we are the only intelligent form of life. Shortly before his death, Templeton, then 91, said that Elizabeth and his grandson Thomas were taking over as custodians of his 20,000 image historical library. Templeton, who emphasized that he never made a profit off of the spaceman photo, remained mystified as to the identity of this uninvited spaceman after all these years up until his death on November 27th, 2011. It's staggering to try and imagine the things that we can't comprehend or explain. Is it possible that the spaceman of the photo is a being from the future or a visitor from another planet? Perhaps warning us of some imminent danger or perhaps sightseeing in some sort of futuristic, tourist, time-traveling vacation. Perhaps we will never know. But what if, what if, one day in the very near future, we end up finding out? Until next time, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, please like the video and subscribe to the channel and follow me on Twitter. Like, literally, right after hearing this, do these things, and it will help me out immensely. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all very soon.